Hello, my name is Hilary Weller. This is a very brief introduction to Fourier analysis and how it's used in atmosphere and ocean sciences. Uh, so in, in this application area it's used for analysing data, for numerical methods and for the numerical analysis of numerical methods. Any periodic integrable function f of x which is defined on minus pi and pi, but it can be rescaled, so it's defined on any interval. So any integrable function uh, can be expressed as a Fourier series. So that's as a Fourier series as an infinite sum of sines and cosines like this. So all, the, all these sines and cosines are different wavelengths with different k's here. Some, some definitions. The a k's and the b k's here are the Fourier coefficients. The sines and the cosines of different uh, wavelengths are the, called the Fourier modes. And k is the wave number. The wave number is the number of complete waves that fit into the interval minus pi to far, pi. So this is a graph showing sine kx for different values of k. So here this black line is showing k equals 1. That's exactly one wave is fitted into 2 pi. The blue line is k equals 2, two waves in there. And the green line is k equals 4. The wavelength, uh, we can see from here that the wavelength is going to be defined as 2 pi. Here's the wavelength divided by the number of waves in that interval, so it's 2 pi over k. The more Fourier modes that are included in this sum, the closer the sum should get to the original function. Here's an example of uh, some Fourier modes of a function. So the black line shows the original function. I'm going to add Fourier modes. So this is the this is the first Fourier mode, and this is the approximation of that black function using just the first Fourier mode. We're going to add more. So they're each of them getting higher and higher um, wave number, different amplitudes, getting closer and closer to the original function. We're going to get to twenty and then it's very close, but not quite there. Here are the first four Fourier modes of a square wave. Fourier, Fourier series are not only used to represent continuous functions, they can also be used to represent functions with discontinuities. However, as you add more modes, it does get closer, but you will always get this, these oscillations around the discontinuity, which is referred to as spectral ringing. Each mode can also be represented by the motion of a circle. And the motion of a circle has a speed and a radius. And the speed and the radius represent the wave number and the Fourier coefficients. Have a think about this and work out which is which, which out of the speed and the radius represent the uh, wave number and the Fourier coefficient. Here, as you can see, these are all added up now. And sometimes they are cancelling each other out to try and make it the square wave constant and sometimes they're all acting together and it's going very fast around. So uh, pause if you want to have more time to think about which is which out of the wave number and the coefficient and I'm about to reveal it now. So the speed at the, around the circle gives you the wave, the wave number and the radius gives you the coefficient. Uh, equivalently um, Fourier series can be represented as an infinite sum of exponentials using the relationship e to the i theta is equal to cos theta plus i sine theta, where i is the square root of minus 1. And for an exercise, you can work out, uh, if we've got a, a, a Fourier sum which is represented with these little a k's and b k's, how can we work out what the big a k's are in terms of these little a k's and b k's? Um, if we know that these are the same, so they're going to be complex, complex valued. I'm not going to show the answer to that, but you can uh, download it from the lecture version of these lecture notes uh, to check your answer or find out how it's done. Next, a Fourier transform. A Fourier transform transforms a function f, which is defined over space or, or over time, into the frequency domain, so it's defined in terms of Fourier coefficients. So if we start from f, we can work out all the Fourier coefficients, a, k and b, k, 
using these analytic, analytic expressions. And this transformation is a Fourier transform going from F to AK and BK. That's a continuous Fourier transform. You're working out all of them with this continuous integral. A discrete Fourier transform um, converts a list of 2n plus 1 equally spaced samples of uh, this function f into the list of the first n plus 1 complex valued Fourier coefficients. So that's um, calculated with a sum rather than an integral. Uh, and it's calculated with this formula. Um, and then a, a truncated Fourier series is the the first n Fourier, some of the first n coefficients. So truncated Fourier series is an approximation to the function f. So if you, if you sample at n at n points, um, the Fourier the Fourier series, the truncated Fourier series would fit the sample points exactly. Uh, for, Fast Fourier transforms are done with a computer using a fast Fourier transform, which is co commonly called an FFT, and then they're uh, transformed back again with the inverse Fourier transform, which is commonly called IFFT. So this transfer transforms the Courier coefficients back into the values of the function. So the uh, the FFT will take you from the values of the function to the Fourier coefficients, and the inverse error FFT will take you back again. You can do differentiation interpolation with using Fourier series, and if this is done um, discreetly, this is a very accurate way of doing it. So if you've got this uh, uh, Fourier series, then you can, by differentiating the sines and the cosines, you can work out what the gradient of f of x is, uh, or equivalent, you could differentiate this part, and you can differentiate again to get the second derivative. So take some time to see if you can do that. Pause the video if necessary before I show the answers. So here we've differentiated cos to get minus sine and taken out a factor of k there. Differentiated sine kx to get cos kx. And uh, differentiated the exponential to get ik, ak, e to the i kx. And the second derivative, um, do that integration again, do that differentiation again. Um, now you've got i squared here, which becomes minus one. These have this. If you do differentiation like this, it's got spectral accuracy. So the order of accuracy is as high as the number of points. Um, so as well as differentiation, these um, Fourier series can be used to interpolate f from the sample points onto an undefined point x um, by evaluating um, the function using the sum of the sines and cosines. And again, the order of accuracy of that is spectral. Because this is so accurate, uh, some weather forecasting models use spectral, me spectral methods. For example, ECMWF, the European Centre for Medium Range Weather Forecasts, uses a spectral model. And the prognostic variables are transformed between physical space and uh, spectral space using FFTs and inverse FFTs. Actually, because it's on the sphere, they use Legendre transforms. It's a similar principle. Um, and so the gradients, these model gradients are calculated very accurately because they're done with spectral accuracy. Um, next, we're going to have a look at um, wave power and frequency diagrams. So a function f, if a function f has Fourier coefficients a, k and b, k, then wave number k is said to have power a, k squared plus b, k squared. And a plot of wave frequency versus power is referred to as a power spectrum. Uh, before we learn how power spectra are used, we're going to have some revision questions. So here is a Fourier decomposition, f into... Um, sum of sines and cosines. Uh, See so if you can answer the questions before I reveal the answers. Which out of these are the Fourier coefficients? It's the AKs and the BKs. Which are the Fourier modes? It's the sines and the cosines. Which are, which are the wave numbers or frequencies? It's the Ks. And what is the power of a given wave number? That is AK squared plus BK squared bk squared. Next, how would you describe the operation k 
going from a function f into these Fourier coefficients a k and b k. That's a Fourier transform. Given a list of 2n plus 1 equally spaced samples of our function f, how would you describe the following operation to con convert it into a list of 2n of n plus 1 Fourier coefficients? That is a discrete Fourier transform. What's the wavelength of a wave described by sine 4x? Well, that's going to be 2 pi divided by the number of waves in the interval, so it's going to be 2 pi over 4. So now we're going to look at analysing power spectra, and what power spectra means. The black lines show the daily rainfall at a, a rainfall station in the Middle East for 21 years. And the red line shows the Fourier filtered data using the first 40 wave numbers. So I've got some observations about this. First of all, this data is very noisy, um, and it has an an clearly it has an annual cycle. Uh, however, the Fourier filtered data is very smooth because only low wave numbers are included. Um, and secondly, the Fourier filtered data includes negative values, which rainfall is neg ne never negative, but because you're truncating it, you've got negative values because of the spectral ringing and because you're trying to represent discontinuities. Here is the power spectrum of this data. Um, and so here the number per year is the wave number divided by 365 divided by the total number of days. That's how I calculated the wave number, how I got the x-axis. So some observations about this power spectra. First of all, there's a peak there at one per year. So that's the annual cycle. Um, secondly, you would need to have looked at a number of power spectra to, to notice this, um, but it'll become obvious when we look at some more. There's a lot of power at these high frequencies in this power spectra. That represents the fact that there is uh, daily variability. There's rainfall varies from day to day, so there's power at, power at all frequencies, particularly high at um, these high frequencies, this daily variability. Next we're going to look at a time series of the sea surface temperature in the Nino 3 region of the equatorial Pacific. This is a, this is a diagnostic of El Nino. Um, so the black line shows the raw data, you can see it going up and down from year to year. Uh, this black dashed line shows the uh, Fourier filtered data, including only modes which have a frequency of two years and slower. And the grey dashed line shows the annual cycle, so that's just one, um, one of the Fourier modes. So this annual cycle here is just one of the Fourier modes, the mode at one year. So that's, that's a way to calculate an annual cycle, is to pick out the one Fourier mode. Um, so the two years and slower data is the sum of all the Fourier modes of the frequencies of two years and slower. And so this shows you how the sea surface temperature is varying, ignoring the annual cycle, because the annual cycle is not is faster than two years. So you can see that it's, um, it's going up and down here regardless of the, uh, the annual cycle. You can see this big El Nino here, which appears as a big oscillation regardless of the annual cycle. Now here's the power spectra, some observations about this power spectra. Again there's this very dominant uh, peak at one year because there's an annual cycle. There's, in comparison to the rainfall data, there's very little power at the high frequencies. This is because sea surface temperature varies slowly from day to day. Um, this observation is um, it's not entirely clear from the power spectra. I know that El Nino occurs every three to seven years, um, and so I'm guessing that there's power at high power at this one to ten year frequency range for El Nino, but that's not very clear from the power spectra. Uh, finally, here's a um, time series of the quasi biannual oscillation. This is uh, the QBO, which is an oscillation of the equatorial wind 
between Easterlies and Westerlies in the tropical stratosphere, which has a mean period of 28 to 29 months. That's very regular. And here's the power spectra. Um, it's, it's quite difficult finding meteorological data that doesn't have a dominant annual cycle. This one doesn't. You can see the dominant peak here is at two is close to two years, not one year, which is unusual. There's um, there's less much less power at high frequencies. So this QBO doesn't have much decadal variability, like um, or, or or two to seven year variability, like sorry three to seven year variability like El Nino, and there's very little high frequency variability, less power at long at Less power at high frequencies and less, it's just the daily variability, less power at long time scales. So it's really very much dominated by this two year oscillation. And that uh, concludes this video looking at um, Fourier analysis and how it's used in atmospheric sciences.